Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone who loves pigs in space, welcome to the Wednesday Night Joke Net here on the 146.895 repeater. I am KE8PVL, your net control for the evening. My name is Nemo, November Echo Mike Oscar, and I am located in Denmark Township. Before I go any further, is there anyone that needs this repeater for emergency or priority traffic? All right, nothing heard. If anybody does need this repeater for emergency or priority traffic, please break in at any time with break and your call sign, and we will concede the repeater for the duration of your emergency. Again, this is the Wednesday Night Joke Net here on the 146-895 repeater. This is a directed net, and all traffic should go through net control. Everyone with a valid amateur radio license is encouraged to participate. Everyone listening to us on scanners or over on YouTube, get your license and... Uh, We'll get you participating, too. This net meets every Wednesday night on this repeater uh, at 8 p.m. <laughs> you can get to this repeater via Echolink. The Echolink node for that is WAIJC-L. The repeater does have a standard offset and a PL tone of 141.3 if you're listening local. Please, the purpose of this net is to have fun making each other laugh, coming up with crazy punchlines for this week's joke. This is a three-round net, so please stick around so, or you may miss something. Before I go down the list of regular check-ins, let me just quick break and say that this repeater is owned and operated by Tom, NHCT. It's available for public use, and uh, please treat the repeater like it's got a two-minute timeout. All right, let's go down the list of regular check-ins, and we'll see who all is here this evening. At the tippity top of the list, we've got Sonny, KD8, LHR. Are you with us tonight? All right, well, maybe he's out at work. I think he can reach us from there, but uh, I don't think he's allowed to, to tonight. So uh, hopefully he'll be checking in with us again real soon. Next on the list, I've got Jeff, KC8, LAR. All right, good to have you with us tonight, Jeff. Always a pleasure. Next on my list, we've got KE8YQL. Chris, are you with us tonight? All right, nothing heard from him. I haven't seen him pop up in the last couple of days on the chat or uh, for the for the Amigos Radio Club Ashavila chat. And I haven't heard him on the radio. Maybe we should be reaching out to him, make sure he's doing all right. Uh, next on my list is AC8YJ. Wayne, are you with us? All right. Well, maybe he'll be with, joining us a little later on as well. Let's try Dan, N8DRL. All right, Dan, good to have you with us tonight. Appreciate you being here. Next on my list, we've got Ron, KC8, RJO. Okay, no contact from Ron. We'll, uh, hopefully he'll check in a little later, too. Let's try Jim, KE8, LFR. Jim, I'll put you down on the list, and we'll give a shout out when it comes around to you. And if you're here, you're here. If not, we'll uh, we'll take you as the check in anyway. Thank you for being here tonight. Appreciate it. Next on the list, we've got uh, Doug K8 TBX. Are you with us tonight? K8 TBX here. Very good, Doug. Sounding good. Coming into the repeat of this evening. Next on my list is Drew, Alpha Alpha 8, Delta Lima. Uh, no copy. 
Let's try Jerry N3 EVT. All right, nothing heard there. Uh, it's a nice night. I'm sure everybody's out for a walk. That's what I would be doing if I could. All right, let's try Joe. K8 DNF, how about you, man? Are you with us? All right, nothing heard there. Let's reach out to Ruth Ann. I know I heard her checking into the repeater just a few minutes ago. KE8ZVO. All right, well, maybe she went down the hall. All right, let's try Frank. KE8ZHH. got one guest tonight. Next on the list, we've got Andrew W8 IJC. Hi, good evening, one and all. Andrew W8 IJC is here. All right, Andrew, thanks for being here tonight. Always a pleasure to have you. We'll be looking forward to the SFI report later on, right around the same time we get to Frank the Weather Guy who uh, also made a good guest tonight. All right, uh, anybody else I missed? This is KE8PBL with the Wednesday Night Joke Net. Please call. November 3, Echo Victor Tango, Portable Jerry. All right, got N3, EVT. And thanks for being here tonight. Anybody else? N8, DRL, check me in now. All right, Dan, I'll put you down as an I.O. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, anybody else, please call. All right, I got an Echo Link station in there. Let me just double check that call sign. It was at Whiskey Bravo 8, Victor November Hotel. Very good. Thank you for checking in with us tonight. Appreciate you being here. Um, Mike, uh, very good. I'm, I'm kind of familiar with that area. My grandparents lived in Indian Hills, not too far from you there. We used to go down there quite a bit during the summertime. Uh, again, thank you for being here tonight. Anybody else want to check in, please call. All right, Ruth Ann, got you locked in there. Uh, I did give a call out for you a minute ago. We figured you might have been grabbing a beverage or going down the hall. Anybody else? All right, nothing heard. I'm going to lock that list in as we have it. And uh, if anybody else wants to check in, we'll have some opportunities for that a little later on. Let's put our thinking caps on our funny bones and we'll get into this week's joke. All right, uh, after last week, I, I thought we'd try a softball or we should get some good answers for this one. I know I got, I got slaughtered on last week's joke question, so we'll try this one too. We'll see, uh, I don't have the actual answer because I know what the real answer is being in, in theater. Maybe somebody else will have come up with it, but uh, so this week's joke is, why do we tell actors to break a leg? This week's joke is, why do we tell actors to break a leg? 
And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the rotation off. We'll start it off with, uh, well, we'll start it off with Doug. KE8TBX, good to have you with us tonight. And why do we tell actors to break a leg? All right, I got a first stumper tonight. That's a good one for me. I'll take that. Uh, next on the list, we would go down here to Frank, KE8ZHH. Good to have you with us tonight. And why do you tell actors to break a leg? This is KE8ZHH. Oh, that's a stumper for me. Uh, to act like they break broke a leg to fool the audience that's my guess uh, I know it's not a good one but that's all I can think of right now so back to Nemo and that control all right to act like it very good <laughs> I like that one that's a good start all right next on the list we've got Andrew W8IJC why do we tell actors to break a leg W8IJC, Andrew here once again. Boy, you got me with that one as well, Nemo. Uh, I don't know what the punchline is. I think it was it was to wish them... Heck, I don't know. Yeah, I got nothing on that one, but I'm interested to hear what it is. W8IJC, back to that. Oh, man, still sick. Uh, sorry to hear that, ma'am. Uh, second stumper for the night, though, is good for me. Three and I'm, I'm in knocking it out of the park. Next on the list, we've got Jerry Mobile. Thank you for being here tonight. N3 EVT. Why do we have? Why do we tell actors to break a leg? Well, of course it means uh, good luck to them, and that's a phrase that you never repeat in the theater. You never say out loud "good luck." But I've had some experience working at Radio City Music Hall in New York, and there is such a thing as a leg curtain, which is behind the main curtain. And so I know if you go forward of that curtain, you break a leg. But that's that's hardly a joke. So back to net control, N3VT. All right, Jerry, thank you for that one there. And you are correct on that. Uh, that is actually the reason why we tell actors to break a leg. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it has to do with stage fright and wishing them good luck. And it's it, it's similar to the whole lights, camera, action thing. Uh, you know, in film, you, they never actually say that. All that stuff is all set up and ready to go before they ever get to the action part. All right, next on the list. Uh, well, that puts us down to our new guy tonight. Welcome to the Wednesday Night Joke Net, Mike. And uh, we'll put you on the hot seat. Uh, WA, uh, VNH, and why do we tell actors to break a leg? All right, uh, very good. It's good luck. All right, so next one on my list is we've got Ruth Ann, K E eight Z V O. Thanks for being here tonight. And why do we tell actors to break a leg? Uh, I knew that it was because that's how you say good luck to an actor before they go on stage, but I didn't know the background of it, how it started. All right, very good. Uh, but there is a punchline in here somewhere. Eventually, we'll get to it. Uh, next on the list, we've got Jeff, KC8LAR. Good to have you with us tonight. 
And why do we tell actors to break a leg? Well, Nemo, that's a good question. The only thing I can come up with is if you told them to break both of them, they'd never make it out on stage. But up, up. Back to that control. This is KCLAR. All right, that's a little longer answer than I can jot down, but I'll remember it later, and we'll make sure we put that one on the list. Uh, let's give out. Let's let's give Jim a try and see if he's with us still. Jim, uh, K8 LFR, he's still with us. Why do we tell actors to break a leg? I'm listening, but I'm still occupied, and um, I think it's for good luck, K8 LFR, or means good luck. All right, very good. That's uh, that's another good luck answer, and yep, it definitely means good luck uh, in the acting business, there, so to speak. That puts us at the that rounds the list out as I have it. Uh, before I get into the actual answer that I have here, is there anybody that wants to check in? Please call KE8 PVL. KE8 PVL, KE8 LHR. Better late than never because of my clock. And it's for good luck, is my answer. All right, for good luck. Very good. And uh, that's another one. Anybody else want to check in? Please call. KE8TBX with a change. KE8TBX, hold on one second. Uh, anybody else? All right, K8TBX, Doug, go ahead. Thanks, Debo. And uh, after thinking about it, uh, I'd like to unstump. Uh, my answer would be to uh, tell the, or to let the actor know that he can become part of the cast. K8TBX. All right, uh, let the actor know to become part of the cast. Very good. One last call out before I get into the actual answer. This is K8PVL with the Wednesday Night Chuck Net. Anybody want to check in? All right, nothing heard. So tonight's joke, why do we tell actors to break a leg? We got some good answers tonight. I appreciate the, the technical answers behind it, too. The history there. Uh, some I'm glad somebody else told it, not just me. Uh, this week's joke: Why do we tell actors to break a leg? Because every play has a cast. Why do we tell actors to break a leg? Because every play has a cast. All right, some good answers there, though, guys. We appreciate the deep thought behind all of that. All right, uh, let me do some quick announcements, and then we'll get into why everybody's really here. All right, uh, so this coming July, we've got the Ashbula County Ham Fest coming up. That'll be July 20th, 2024. We're all looking forward to that. We've uh, we've been doing that for the last couple years, and it's been turning out great. We're going to have a great turnout this year, I'm sure. Uh, hopefully, we'll see a whole bunch of people there. That is going to be at Pioneer Picnic, uh, the place we've been having it at for the last couple years. And it'll be... Uh, rain or shine event obviously all that hopefully we'll have a little bit more information for you by the next net um, and we'll be starting to talk about uh, volunteer meetings and all that stuff coming up also we've got the Aries net over on the 146715 repeater that repeater has a standard offset and a PL tone of 141.3 that net meets every Monday night at 8 p.m. click in over there and uh, and give emergency services and some great folks over there I'm going to skip down the list of uh, other announcements except for to say we do have a Wednesday Night Joke Net Facebook page and we do have a Wednesday Night Joke Net YouTube channel. I try and keep those things maintained as often as possible. So if you miss out on the joke or uh, any of the announcements that you can check out over there and download them. Usually I get those up by Thursday morning. Oh, there is one more announcement I have. Let me take a quick break. 
Uh, the Andover Volunteer Fire Department is having a pancake breakfast this month, the March 23rd and March 30th. That's going to be from 8 to 1 p.m. on both of those days. It's a fundraiser for the fire department. Please go down there. There is a small fee uh, for the adults and a smaller fee for the seniors and an even smaller fee for kids under yeah, 6 to 10 years old. Uh, that will be at the fire station. That's going to be station 153 down there in Pierpont. So, or I'm sorry, down there in Andover. And uh, hopefully we'll get some folks down there to, to help them out. They, they could always use some help down there uh, with the fundraising. And, uh, and if anybody's interested in volunteer firefighting, we've got a whole bunch of volunteer firefighting stations around here that could sure use a hand too. All right, that's the only other announcement I have. So let's get into why everybody's really here. We'll start the comment round. Uh, Sonny, you're at the bottom of the list, man. We'll, we'll get to you in a minute there. We'll just start off here with Doug. K8TBX, thanks for being here tonight. Always a pleasure. And what do you got for us this evening? Uh, good evening, Nemo. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, the only thing I got is I've got a... Uh, I set up a new ICOM uh, as my base station got rid of my VTEC. And I think the ICOM is a lot cleaner. The other reason I got it uh, set up was uh, it has cross-banding capability. Now I can go wander around the yard with the handheld because I can't hit the repeater with the handheld direct. So uh, setting it up for uh, cross-band, I, I, uh, I can enjoy the radio while I'm sitting around outside. That's it for me, ke 8 TVX. All right, very good. You, you know, I did that once. I think last summer I, I just sat outside with my HT and I ran the net from outside just sitting uh, sitting in the backyard there. And that was great. I had I enjoyed that. But uh, now I'm too detailed with it to, I think, make that happen. So the next one on the list, we've got uh, Frank, KE8. Oh, wait, uh, sorry, we'll skip right down here to Jerry, N3, EVT. Uh, go ahead with what you got tonight, man. <laughs> Well, good evening, all. Uh, it's a fairly pleasant uh, evening out. I've got two things. One, I wanted to get in my dibs on first mate Miss Piggy in the Muppet movie. And the other is an observation. Looking to the west, you'll see the uh, crescent moon. And about uh, two and a half inches to the left, you'll see a shiny dot of light. And that's Jupiter. And that's about 400 and 40 million miles away this time of year. So that's a good sight up there tonight. Back to net control, N3VT. All right, very good, Jerry, and thank you for your guests on the show tonight. Appreciate that. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, speaking of space and moon and stuff, um, I've had a few people that have asked me about Wednesday, the Wednesday of the eclipse, and I am going to be taking that day off of work. So I was thinking maybe uh, I'll open my place up. I've got plenty of room for antennas and goofiness, and um, I'm going to have some friends come up probably with some telescopes and view the eclipse. So uh, everybody's invited to come out there. Maybe we'll shoot some EME and see what happens when the eclipse comes up and do, we do EME and or some MVIS stuff, try and figure out what all goes on. Uh, be a great day to do some ham radio experimenting. All right, let me talk to the new guy here tonight. Mike, good to have you with us via Echolink. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, WB8VNH, uh, thanks for being here, and what do you got for us? Uh, WB8VNH, Mike via Echolink, are you still with us? I am, I am. Sorry, I was across the room and I had to find my phone on the workbench. Uh, 
I don't really have any comments. I'm just, I'm just listening this evening and enjoying it. Um, over. W eight I J C link. All right, very good. Well, thank you for joining us from down there by Cincinnati. Really appreciate it. And hopefully you'll become a regular. Uh, we do have some folks that check in on Echolink every once in a while. And, well, uh, like I said, hopefully you'll be a regular. All right, let's go down to Ruth Ann, K-E-A-Z-V-O. How you doing tonight and what do you got for us? Hi, I have two things. Uh, first of all, I was looking at the NASA thing for the satellite passing over. And the schedule says that tonight, Wednesday the 13th at 9.42 p.m., uh, 10 degrees above west-southwest and uh, towards 27 degrees above west, there will be a two-minute uh, pass-by of, uh, of the satellite, of the uh, station, space station. And tomorrow night, there's a five-minute pass over at 8.54 p.m. Uh, southwest to northeast. So I thought that might be interesting. Uh, KE8, ZBO, back to net. All right, very good. Uh, absolutely interesting. You know, that's actually on my bucket list for amateur radio stuff to do is talk to an astronaut uh, from this International Space Station. I can't wait to do that. Um, I am not in the position to do it tomorrow <laughs> or tonight because I'm just so busy, but uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll get a chance to do that very soon. I do frequently monitor where the ISS is going to be. And, um, and I do have radios ready to go when the time comes. All right, next on the list, we've got Sonny, KD8LHR. Thank you so much for being here tonight, man. Better late than never. What do you got for us tonight, my friend? Uh, not too much tonight. Sorry, I wasn't there <coughs> first thing. Uh, I've been busy most of the morning with the wife and then uh, got done with that. I was supposed to go to K8 DNFs and well, I went to my eyelids instead and passed out on the couch. But uh, I'd like to send a special prayer out there for my friend Bob, N8 DPD. And uh, uh, also, I heard Tom was back in the hospital as well. I don't know if anybody knows any information is it from that or not. But uh, Bob N8DPD has cancer, and uh, he started his uh, treatments tonight, uh, today sometime. So if everybody could throw a prayer out there for Bob, that'd be great. And uh, give him your best and hope that he uh, gets through everything he needs to get through. That I'll just turn it back over to net control. Thanks for picking me up, and uh, yeah, don't forget the ham fest is coming up. You're right, Nemo. And uh, Joe and I are working on some cups, and he put it in the uh, messenger group there. If anybody wants a cup with your call sign on it for the 2024 ham fest, with the design that is shown in the picture on the uh, group chat. Uh, either let me know or let him know, and uh, we'll be able to specifically make that cup for you. Otherwise, it's just going to be the emblem or the emblem. Yeah, the logo that you see there in the group chat. With that, we'll turn it over back over to Net Control, and I'm going to secure my station and go figure out what's going on with me for the rest of the night because I got to work early in the morning. Seven threes, guys. KD8 LHR. All right, Sonny. Yep, and our best wishes out to Bob and DPD. Great guy, and uh, and he's been a big supporter of, of everything the amateur radio in the community over the last many years. And uh, man, I hope he gets better soon. I know uh, best wishes from all of us. I'm sure. And I did not know Tom was back in the hospital, NHCT, and hopefully he will, uh, he'll bounce back soon. I thought he was doing good. He came back from that pneumonia and seemed like he was doing all right. Maybe he just uh, jumped out there too fast and didn't quite 
get it right, hopefully. I will, uh, I'll be sending him a message soon and, and wishing him the best, that's for sure. All right, let's move on down the list here. Uh, let's see, we're going to Jeff, KC8 LAR. Good to have you with us tonight, my friend, and what do you got for us tonight? Uh, good evening, Nemo. Everyone else on the net, not a whole lot. Um, just trying to take care of some odds and ends, uh, uh, getting some uh, last remnants out and uh, some new stuff in here and... Uh, Trying to decide what's staying in the shack and what's going. So, uh, still, still trying to make some headway, but uh, we'll get it cleaned up and, and looking proper before too long. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, working, working, working. Um, just like a busy bee, I guess. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I heard about uh, uh, both of those, and uh, my prayers go out to uh, Tom. Um, and any DPD as well. Um, uh, both real good guys, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, they both uh, uh, bounce back soon, sooner than later. And with that, we'll pass it back to Net Control. This is KC at LAR. All right, Jeff, thank you for being here tonight and for those good wishes going out to some great guys in the amateur radio community up here. We really appreciate everything that those two do for us up here, and uh, and hopefully we wish them both a speedy recovery, and we'll move down the list. Uh, well, that puts us down the list. So we'll go down to, well, let's go over to Andrew for the SFI report, W-A-I-J-C. Andrew, thanks for being here tonight. Take it away, my friend. Uh, good evening once again. <clears throat> Andrew, W-A-I-J-C here. Uh, I'll say this so I can see if I can keep my thoughts organized here. Before I get into the SFI report, um, as many of you know, I had a uh, similar situation here with my family and my sister as uh, any DPD may be going through right now. I, I don't know the specifics, but that, that C word is, it's, you know, it's pretty scary. All the All the good wishes from myself and my family to him and Tom, uh, not, uh, not a super religious person myself, but, uh, I'll say that a lot of silent promises were made during my sister's ordeal, and, uh, I think, uh, I think should there be a man upstairs listening, I, I think he knows my number by now. Anyway. Uh, let's get into the SFI report for this evening. As of, what, what do we see here? March 13th, uh, 2024. Oh, oh no, that's local time, my bad. Uh, March 13th, 2024, 0033 hours UTC time. The SFI is currently a depressingly low <laughs> 128 points, down three. And the sunspot number is a Surprisingly high for that SFI. Uh, hey, that rhymed. Uh, 68 up 12. <clears throat> um, geez, I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> we are uh, just about approaching solar maximum here, of course, uh, within the next uh, sometime this year, I believe, is supposed to be solar maximum. It's not an exact science, so like, you know, we'll we'll see like the levels peak and maybe they'll go down and then go back up a little higher again. It's, you know, it's it's kind of a thing. It's it's strange how they, they measure it, but, uh, yeah, this is just a temporary dip, and, uh, yeah, I mean, a couple, uh, <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago, for the International, uh, ARRL DX contest, that was fun as heck, by the way, uh, it was like, gosh, it was, it was up in the 80s or 90s, uh, 180s or 190s, I should say, so, yeah, uh, this, this is just a temporary lull, I should say. Um, as far as auroral conditions, what do we got here for Aurora Power? 14 gigawatts, so a whole lot of nothing unless you live in frickin' Canada. <laughs> and, uh, no, no, no real noteworthy flares, uh, in the past couple days. A couple of C flares, one almost M flare, which is small potatoes because a couple of weeks ago we had, or actually it was last month, we had, uh, an, an X 6.3, so nothing interesting as of now. As for myself, uh, let's see what's been going on. Well, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I can come over the radio too well, but uh, still, uh, still
still got a nasty cold here. It's been progressing, getting better slowly but surely. Uh, might be able to make it to class tomorrow if it decides it wants to get just a touch better. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's annoying. But um, I don't know if I've mentioned it a whole lot. I'm sure some of you who are at Winter Field Day and whatnot have heard me talk on the Messenger group chat. Uh, I like Polaroids. And uh, I've always liked cameras and stuff in general. And, well, uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, what was it? When, when did I shoot that roll? Oh, it was, yeah, beginning of this month, like like the third or the second, I believe. Um, I shot a, uh, a roll of 35 mil film that I had bought off Amazon. So this was this was fresh stuff. It was like Kodak Ultramax 400 or whatever. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, made in, like, the within the last year or so. Uh, shot that, sent it off to be developed, shed a couple tears from my wallet because of how expensive it is to get film developed. <laughs> Granted, I did spring for the, uh, the, their highest resolution scans that they could do because I, I wanted my film photos, my, like, this is my benchmark, this is how this film is supposed to look. I even went and had them hey, say, hey, you can do your color correction or whatever on these scans, but I also want you to do an additional scan on this film with no color correction or anything so yeah uh got those in today and uh some of the ones that i expected uh here break for time some of the ones that i expected that wouldn't uh didn't come out uh <clears throat> well they didn't come out very well they were blurry um but that was because i was shooting my camera in low light with no flash because i wasn't sure if flash photography was appropriate but uh it turns out it was so i uh, also shot a couple in this situation with uh full flash those came out uh, as expected. Red eye, though. Oh my gosh, so much red eye. I, there was a there's a mode on my camera to reduce red eye. I wish I would have known a, about it at that time. But uh, <laughs> I'm just using an old like one of the last I think uh, film SLR cameras that uh, Canon made before they went to digital. Um, and yeah, it's it's been pretty neat looking at these photos, ones that came out properly. And I, I got a couple where it's just this was full bright sun outside. And I'm taking pictures of my my cats sleeping on the cars and oh man they're they're just really cool if anyone wants to see them uh let me know and uh that reminds me i need to check my winlink email sorry jeff <laughs> but uh yeah just really cool and i i've uh i got one more scan that's in process right now i because i said i think it was like two rolls i think or i said for the first uh first group of stuff that i wanted to get scanned and well processed and scanned i should say <clears throat> and they uh, they return the negatives as well, but uh, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how those come out. And I also sent off two more rolls to a different company, a little bit cheaper. Uh, scans are a little bit more resol uh, lower resolution, but this is expired film, so I'm not sure how it's going to come out. Uh, storage conditions were basically just in a room for you know since it was expired in like 2008, so we will see. Um, the film is like uh, this uh, this uh, old Fuji stock. It was like Fuji Superior Extra 400 or whatever, and they don't make it anymore. But supposedly it was one of the better uh, like consumer non-professional 35 mil film stocks, and can't get it in the U.S. anymore. So if it comes out salvageable, I'm gonna use it because I got <laughs> 11 rolls of the stuff plus a little bit more that's in my fridge now. Obviously, that's not going to uh, reverse any degradation that may have happened over the years, but I'm not going to shoot 11 more, well, actually, no, it's more like 16 or 17 rolls of film in, you know, six months, let alone enough time where it would actually degrade further. So, I don't know. We'll see how that comes out. And I actually, I still have to mail that off. Got to find the packing tape and stick that in my mailbox tomorrow. So, uh, we'll see how those come out. Uh, other than that, still waiting for my Polaroid. It's stuck in U.S. Customs right now, so that's lovely. And uh, yeah, like I said, all the all the best there to. Uh, oh boy, my radio didn't like that. That scared me. Started beeping like, "Hey, you better shut up and stop talking." <laughs> all the best to uh, NADPD and uh, and Tom there. I wish them a speedy recovery. Seven threes, everyone. W8IJC, uh, we're going to be securing our station here as well.
All right, very good. Thank you, Andrew, for the SFI report. And, uh, man, I hope you get better, too. Uh, hey, get better. And come on over here on uh, the Eclipse Night and we'll, or Eclipse Day, and we'll do some cool stuff radio-wise. All right. Now I'm going to hand it over to Frank, the weather guy. K-E-H-Z-H-H, take it away, my friend. All right, Elo, thanks a lot. Uh, current weather conditions in Pierpont Township are 51 degrees with 78% humidity and a barometric pressure is at 29.93 inches and is rising. Wind is out of the south at one mile per hour. woo we? Today's high was 73 degrees and low was 46 degrees. For tomorrow, expect sunny skies with highs around 68 and low of 46. With rain moving in around 6 p.m. for the rest of the evening and early Friday morning hours. Record high for today in weather history stands at 76 degrees in 1990, and record low is 3 degrees in 1960. Sunrise will be at 7.35 a.m. Sunset will be at 7.28 p.m. Uh, wow, that's almost 12 hours daylight. We're nearing the uh, spring equinox there. Oh, we have a day of daylight and uh, darkness. And now for some weather trivia. In August of 2003, a heat wave traveled across Europe, turning grapes into raisins. <laughs> Before they were picked from the vine, temperatures hit a whopping 104 degrees in the vines started to shut down to protect themselves. A few grapes were scorched, spoiling their flavor, but most were so parched, they turned into raisins, right on the vine. And finally, the weather joke of the week. What's the difference between the weather and the climate? What is the difference between the weather and the climate? You can't weather a tree, but you can climb it. You can't weather a tree, but you can climb it. All right, with that, this is K-E-A-G-A-K-H, I'm going to send it back to Net Control and Nemo. Thanks for listening. Have a great evening, everybody. K8 PVL with the Wednesday Night Joke Net. Thank you, Frank. You always bring a great treat to the net, and I appreciate you being here. All right. Uh, before I go any further, is there anyone else who wants to check in? Please call K8 PVL. Free check, free fan. All right, got you in there for a recheck, Ruth Ann. Anybody else? All right, nothing else heard. Ruthanne, go ahead with your recheck, K-E-8-Z-V-O. Uh, K-E-8-Z-V-O. Um, I wanted to take this moment when most of the people in Amigos are on the air to thank everybody for coming over last week and putting up the antenna. It is wonderful to have it. And, um, you know, I'm still learning how to use my radio. But other than that, I'm just thrilled. And I, I'm not going to get a chance to say anything at the meeting because our other love that we have together is to go to a dance, and there's a dance in Pittsburgh that day. So I won't be coming to the next meeting. So just thanking everybody. And back to Net, K-E-A-T-E-O. Well, Ruthann, you go and dance tonight away and enjoy yourself, and we're happy to have you up on the radio, and you're sounding great. And, you know, it's a, it's it's our, our pleasure to help you out and get you up and running. And new hams are important, and and having you as part of the community is a great asset. Uh, as far as uh, 
do you still have the hum in your speaker? Did you try that thing I talked about earlier today? Uh, yes, I, I unplugged the speaker this afternoon, and when you guys came on tonight, uh, I do have the hum. I unplugged the, uh, I went directly to the wall, to, uh, you know, it was plugged into a, I don't know, whatever those things are called. Anyway, it, I still have a little hum, so we'll still have to figure out what that is eventually. All right, Roger that. We will come over and troubleshoot that as soon as we get a, a, a good opportunity to do so. I'm sure we just need to tie a couple wires to the back of those uh, those machines you got there, and you'll be all set. All right, this is KAPVL with the Wednesday Night Joke Net, and uh, tonight we're going to get into the discussion round for just a little bit here, and it'll be uh, new resources in 2024 that you might have discovered uh, that might help out some ham operators and or are ham related that you might find interesting that you would want to share with folks. All right. So uh, for me, uh, I know last week I mentioned that I was uh, gearing up for my general class uh, test. And in that I was watching some online lectures and there was something really cool that I found. And I think it's a shame Andrew secured his station already because I think he would have been into this, but Frank, you'd probably be into this too. Uh, it was in the in the classroom lecture that I was watching, and I was turned on to this uh, this website, and it's uh, spaceweatherwoman.com, and uh, I'm not promoting her for any particular reason, just uh, it's very cool. She does like the solar report, like all the way through, not just the SFI stuff, but like e even more stuff, and she's got some great resources on there. And she's a ham radio operator. She, she's she got, uh, she runs some ICOMs, and and I don't have her call sign in front of me off the top of my head, but spaceweatherwoman.com is her website. And she's got some amazing information on there, and I'm glad I, I tracked her down and found it because uh, it's really cool to watch. And, uh, you know, that's just a, a good resource that we, we have out there available to us and um and and i just discovered it so things you might have discovered just this year that are great resources for ham operators uh maybe we'll go right up to the list here since a couple people secured their stations let me go up to well we'll go to we'll go down the list in regular order let's try uh jeff kc at lar uh, resources you've discovered just this past year that are good for amateur radio operators. Uh, good evening, Nemo. Everyone else on the net. Um, you know, that's a real good question. Uh, within the last year, um, I don't know if I discovered it, but I rediscovered it. Uh, vocap. Uh, I think they're a great resource, and... Uh, uh, I use it. I usually keep it up along with uh, QRZ, uh, a couple other pages. Um, they've got great forecasting tools. Um, when you're out there uh, uh, looking to see what's probably going to be the best channel to be on, and uh, other than just uh, sitting there listening and uh, uh, going for what you know, um, but uh, yeah. anybody's interested, uh, it's voacap.com. And uh, if you go slash HF, um, that'll get you uh, into their, their main site, and you can go point to point. So if you're, you're looking for an entity, it'll, it'll even uh, forecast and tell you what, what time's the best time so you can arrange your schedule around it. Uh, but uh, wonderful tool uh, for those of us who have uh, gotten into the HF bands and uh, those that are looking at them. Um, uh, hopefully they'll uh, get their upgrade soon and uh, be able to put those tools to use. And uh, with that... Uh, we'll pass it back to uh, Net Control. This is Kilo Charlie 8, Lima Alfa Romeo. All right, Jeff. I got the 2x4 upside the head. Very good, sir, and I'm working on that myself. All right. Next on the list is uh, KEA TBX. Doug, anything new you've discovered this year that would benefit amateur radio? Back to 
All right. Well, uh, sometimes in the learning process, even when you're just getting rolling, you find something new and uh, it's out there. And, and don't forget to share. All right. Very good. Next on the list, we've got Frank, K-E-8-Z-H-H. How about you, man? Something you've discovered this year that is a good benefit to amateur radio you want to share? Uh, K-E-8-Z-H-H. Uh, th- I'm constantly watching YouTube videos uh, to, uh, like, from programming my radios to uh, making antennas and stuff. It's nothing really new. And uh, plus other things like watching music videos and stuff. I've always been a YouTube freak. But uh, that's all I get really at all. And uh, Harbor Freight, they sell these uh, boxes that make great go boxes. Funny has a couple. They're the Apache series, the 3800 and the 4800, and I think the 2800. And they go on sale, they're like pretty cheap, and they're real good boxes to uh, make go boxes. And I'll post them in the group chat room every time they go on sale. Sometimes you get a 15% off, up to 30% off, and I'll post them when they go on sale. They make great go boxes, they got the uh, foam <coughs> in them, and they latch real tight, airtight. They're not completely waterproof. I'd say they're, uh, uh, I forget the standard, the uh, waterproof standard, but they will keep the rain out of your uh, go box, keep your equipment safe. And with that, uh, I'm going to set back to the next control. All right, Frank, KAPVL with the Wednesday Night Junk Net Harbor Freight with go boxes. Very good. Next on the list, we've got Jerry, N3EVT. Good to have you with us tonight, my friend. And uh, how about you? Anything new you've discovered this year that would be a benefit to amateur radio? Well, Nemo, I am uh, Interstate 90 eastbound, so if I uh, fade a bit, that's the reason. Well, I have a, a theme of encouraging new ham operators to learn Morse code and get on CW. And so I've gone on YouTube and started to review some of the videos that have been posted. And as you know, if you've got an iPhone, you're a filmmaker. And what many of these guys forget is they need a good editor. And so far, I have found just dreadfully long and tedious YouTube videos on learning Morse code. So I am committed to watching more of them until I find one I like. Then I'll report back. N3 VT. All right, very good. As a former filmmaker, I I feel you on that 100 <laughs> percent. As far as uh, as far as folks editing, you know, I used to get these guys that come to me and they'd say, uh, "We want." Or, you know, I'd pitch a, mu- a music video for them and say, hey, you know, you want me to come shoot your music videos or your this or that? And they'd say, well, why can't we just do it ourselves? We have phones. I'm like, yeah, but if you can't do everything. You can't perform. You can't You can't shoot. You can't. And YouTube and TikTok and all those from, it just ruins it. It ruins it. I feel like um, I'm like Gollum when I start looking at those things and, and uh, anyway, I feel you on that. We will look forward. If you do find one you like, let me know. All right. Okay. <laughs> That's, uh, this is KAPVL with the Wednesday Night Joke Net. We'll keep moving on down the list. We'll, we'll reach out to Mike. Uh, WB8VNH, thank you for being here tonight, man. Really appreciate it. How about you? Uh, is there anything you've discovered this year that would be a great resource for amateur radio operators?
Uh oh, maybe he's running around looking for his phone again on his desk. Hopefully he finds it. We'll give him a try. WB8 VNH, Mike, are you still with us? All right, well, maybe we lost him. Hopefully he'll check back in with us next week. It was a pleasure having him up here with us tonight. And we'll move on down the list. We'll go down to Ruth Ann, KE8ZVO. How about you? Something you've discovered this uh, this new year that you've been in the amateur radio that'd be a good resource for you, you or anybody else. What I found the most helpful was the ham radio school for studying for my tech in uh, general. And even over the ARRL site for the time being, although I'm going to get back to that one of these days. Uh, but, you know, everything's brand new to me. Um, I'm finding that uh, the, the, compan the, the friendship in the, in the various groups has also been really important. K-E-A-C-V-O, back to net. All right, very good. I, I, you know, and I agree with you on that, too. It, we are very lucky that we live in a in Ashtabula County and that there's such a strong amateur radio community up here that support each other and, and work together. It's it's actually a great thing, and I, I appreciate being up this way. All right, that, I believe, puts us at the bottom of the list here because Sonny did say he was securing his station, and uh, everybody else I have was in and out. Very good. So this is K8 PVL with the Wednesday Night Joke Net. Before I put a bow on it, is there anybody else that wants to check in? Please call K8 PVL. All right, nothing heard. That'll bring us to the end of the net. I will tie it up. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Without you guys, this net wouldn't happen. Uh, you are the reason I do it, and uh, don't ever think that there, that isn't the case because as much as I like doing it, I like having you guys here with me, and uh, I'd just be sitting here talking into a microphone by myself, and that wouldn't be very fun. Uh, Tom, I know know if you are out there listening, but thank you, sir, for the use of your repeater and everything you do for the amateur radio community. We really appreciate you. Uh, this is Kitty 8 pvl and... I'm going to go ahead and return the repeater back over to normal amateur radio use, whatever that might be. Be good to each other, everybody. KEA PVO, clear.